Hello and welcome to Let's Talk SEO. So I've put together a huge case study which mainly involves internal links. Now you've heard a lot of SEOs talk about external links, buying external links, getting external links, uh, earning external links, uh, creating articles to attract external links, also called link magnets. But what you've not heard many people talk about, what is now becoming more common and more SEOs are talking about is internal links. But most people don't really understand internal links. I see a lot of SEOs talk about internal linking, but they have no idea what they're talking about. They don't even have any idea of what types of uh, anchor text to use, how frequently to use it, when to use it, what type of anchor text have more value in the eyes of Google, and what types of anchor text don't have any value. And also in the context of the type of website, for which you're doing the internal linking. So every website is gonna be a little bit different. And so what I did was I put together a huge study and I was working with a few other people and we went to 23 million, yes, 23 million internal links. Now that may sound like a lot, but it's really just a small portion of the internet. And it's a very really small portion of the entirety of the internet. But what we did was we looked at a lot of uh, different types of websites and we also looked at a lot of different types of niches and so what we wanted to do is we wanted to l provide the broadest possible data set and then look into our findings and see exactly what was going on in terms of internal linking. So this, so these internal links encompass 1800 websites, 23 million links and 520,000 that's like half a million individual URLs and so we've gone in we've done the work and it's, it was a lot of work and we put together this case study so that you can know exactly how to build your internal links correctly based on data and I do a lot of testing and this is part of this and since this was recently done you can be assured that this is not a four-year-old case study that you're going to have to rely on. The other thing to bear in mind is at the end of this video, towards the end of the presentation, where I will take you to the case study, we'll also examine like what kinds of anchor text matter most to Google. So should you be doing a lot of uh, exact match anchor text? Or should you be doing uh, empty anchor text? Should you be doing um, naked URLs? And Google advises against non-descriptive anchor text. But if you use non-descriptive anchor text, does that mean you get penalized? And so we've got in, we've looked at all of this, and we made the case study. And so this will give you a very really good idea of how to plan your internal anchor text and how to structure your uh, website so that it gets the most SEO juice without having to buy external links or having to rely on external links. Now, external links are important, but for me, I usually leave that towards the end of the SEO cycle. And so once I've got all my on-page done, is that when I rely on the external anchor text, or that's when I rely on the external in, the external links coming into my site. And so before I go into the video, I just want to say I offer SEO services. I do a great deal of testing. And so my SEO and the work that I do is far superior than any other SEO that are relying on courses, or they go to seminars and they just learn from other people. And a lot of the data is not even correct. And so I, I rely on my own data. You will not see me at a seminar. Uh, I don't sell a course at the moment. A lot of the information I give out is for free. And so my approach is based on real world data and not on something that I heard from another expert. And so the SEO I'm able to do is able to help websites rank very well. And so there's a link in the description that will take you to a Google's form if you're looking for someone to do SEO for you on a monthly basis. Go ahead, fill in the form, get in touch with me. I'll send you an email, we'll set up a meet, we'll discuss what you need. And then, you know, if, it, if all things work out, I'll start doing SEO for you. Um, the other thing you can do is that if you found your website has been penalized by an algorithm, like we have the Marsh Core update running right now alongside the spam, they get a website audit. My website audit is unlike any other website audit you will get. Not only am I pointing out all the problems with your website's SEO, but I'm also telling you how to fix them. And I'm also giving you a strategy on how to rank your website moving forward. And so you don't have to rely on an SEO or hire me to even do it for you. You will do it yourself. And so this is like a do it yourself SEO audit and I make it very easy. So non SEOs, regular people can get in and start fixing their, their own website. Uh, the other thing I offer is a topical mapping service. And 
If you're looking to build authority in an informational niche, topical mapping service is something you should get because I go out and I find all, I, I do a lot of research to figure out what, how your topic should be mapped so that you build authority in your niche. There's a lot of work that, gets, get, that goes into this and it's not an automated process, it's a manual process that could take several days depending on the niche. Again, all of this is available on my website. There's, there are links in the description. You can click the link, go to our site and buy the service. Again, you know, if, you're, if, if, you're, if you know what's going on with your website, that will give you an advantage over your competitors who may or may not know what's going wrong with their site and it also help you stay ahead of Google updates. Now that we have that out of the way, let's jump into the case study. All right, so we studied 23 million links and this is the case study that we put together. Um, I've analyzed 23 million internal links with my partners and 1800 websites were, and some of these websites were our own websites, so client websites, test websites, and the whole body of websites that I have access to, uh, which I think is around 400 websites. Um, so out of 1,800, we had 400 of our own websites. Uh, represented approximately yeah, around half a million URLs. And we compared the data that we got from SEMrush, from Ahrefs, to Google Search Console. And this was mainly to figure out like if like what kind what's the discrepancy ratio between, between what's reported by Search Console and what you see at SCMrush and Ahrefs to, to figure out, to get the real data. And we went a little conservative. Um, and so, uh, because we, we don't want to like overshoot in terms of the data, we, it's, it's fine if we undershoot because as you'll see, um, they, there is a point where you can build way too many links and that can be detrimental to your SEO. Um, and again, when they talk about links, we're talking about internal links and not links coming in from other websites. Um, maybe also compare data with uh, Google Search Console to determine each uh, search clicks for each URL. Again, we did, we did this on our own website, web websites. And then um, what we did was, like, even though, as I say, you, 23 million may sound like a lot, it's like it's a drop in the ocean. Uh, the internet is huge. Um, but let's dive into the study and, you know, let's, let's go into what we found. And I think you'll find uh, our findings very interesting. Um, and so the first thing we, we, we did was we went ahead and took a look at uh, the average number of internal links that a website had. So what we found out that it, it turns out that the road to traffic is paved with internal links and that's what we exactly found. So uh, most websites have, like the pages that they're ranking, have zero to four internal links. And in the grand scheme of things where websites are doing very well, um, the websites that are doing very well have far more internal links to the pages that are ranking. And so zero to four is, is, is very modest. Um, but there, there are exceptions to this in certain industries. I'll not go into that uh, into, in, in this search, in, in this case study. But zero to four internal links is, is modest on average, and it gets around two clicks on average in Google search. Now, if we ramp that up to around 40 to 44 internal links, you know, the, the clicks are quadruple. Like in some cases, we were seeing websites that had between 40 to 44 internal links get around like 20 to 25 clicks, organic clicks from Google. Um, but then there is a point of diminishing returns, as we found that if you have more than 44 links on average, so you have like 45 to 49 links, um, the, amount of, the amount of Google clicks, you lose, the amount of organic clicks you get is actually lower, uh, it lowers. And so you'll peak at around 40 to 44, and I will, being like, you know, cons conservative at first, I will, I will start with 40 internal links and then gradually go to 44, but that's where I will cap out if I'm doing internal linking and there's a landing page I want to rank or, rank or there's a category page I want to rank or if there is a uh, uh, you know, product page that I want to rank. Uh, so why, why are we seeing what we're seeing? So at first glance, um, you'll see that uh, you've got these ubiquitous navigational site-wide links, and so there are quite a few different types of links You've got the site-wide links that are in the navigation. 
then you've got the links that are embedded or the content links, and then you've got also image links. So, you know, will the alt text, those are linked to other pages or the landing page. And so, um, so pages that were getting a lot of links um, would generally be getting VIP treatment um, from Google, but there's a there there's a there's a little bit of a difference here. So when we dug into the data, we found that there are pages with site-wide links um, that also had less traffic, and so the site-wide links didn't necessarily mean they would get more traffic, and so automatically. Um, does that mean that having navigational links only uh, is that important or does not add give value to the page? And so let's say you have like your, your only internal linking is navigational links. Does that mean that, you know, it will not help with SEO? Yes, that's what we kind of found that if you just have site-wide navigational links, it's not uh, your page will underperform. But again, there is a bit of a twist to this. So when you zoom in or when we zoomed into the numbers, uh, we found, as, as I said, it was, uh, we zoomed in, the plot thickened, our data set turned into a roller coaster of spikes, large bustling sites with navigational links steal the scene while smaller sites seem to miss their cue. And so the navigational links were only working best for large sites. And again, these large sites were mainly e-commerce stores. And so e-commerce stores with lots of site-wide links were actually doing far better better than informational sites because informational sites don't have as many pages as e-commerce stores and they don't have as many as a result site-wide links or navigational links um so but but why do more links generally roll out the red carpet for more traffic or at least to a certain stage uh, the clue of this lies in the anchor text and so it's not just about building links because you can have like a menu of links um, with just site-wide links, but then there's also the anchor text that, that matter. And this is, I think, where things get even more interesting. So is there a link between anchor text variety and the traffic with internal links? Uh, the link between the variety of anchor text and the internal links and Google search clicks is remarkably strong, prompting three different data analysis. So the Despite removing nearly half of the outliers, the trend of increasing clicks with more anchor text varied, uh, variety persisted. And so, so what we saw was the more anchor text there was, the more clicks there were in general. Uh, however, the reliability of the data is not, it kind of diminishes beyond a certain threshold of anchor text variations. Um, commonly, pages that have internal links with one, five, or 10 different anchor texts, but very few URLs boast 25 or more variations. Um, still a higher number of anchor text variations from internal links shows a strong cor correlation with increased Google search traffic. And so again, variations, um, again with variations, we kind of not clear here, but what we found was within 20, like up to 25 variations, you will see like the most bang for your buck and then after that it's kind of diminishes and but overall generally more internal links with anchor text is better than links without anchor text so that's just something to bear in mind if you're doing your internal linking so what's the and so what kind of anchor text should we should you choose should you do a naked url should you do a do an anchor tag should you do uh, an empty uh, an, M an empty anchor text, what should you be doing? So the first thing we did, we looked at naked URLs, anchors like, you know, cloudseodubai.com is a naked URL. Uh, but does using URL anchors hurt your search traffic? No, it does not. And so Google says that you, your anchor text should be descriptive, but we've not seen any website with naked URLs um, being penalized by Google. But pages with URL anchors from internal links saw an almost 50% more traffic than pages without URL anchors. And so it's better to have anchors than not to have anchors. Um, but you also want to have variations on your pages. And so again, that's a dis different discussion. So then we have empty anchors. So these are usually image anchor texts. Um, and Google will see, this, see these as empty anchors. In my opinion, it's good to have 
some image anchors, but what's the value of these anchors? In our data set, over 6% of all links contain no anchor text. But, but was it associated with fewer clicks? No. And that's something that's now been established that if you have image anchors, it's not going to harm your SEO like some SEOs like to talk about. And it's good to add these links if you want to add variety to what you're doing. Um, the next one is the exact match anchor text. So for instance, my site SEO, my SEO site. And so pages with at least one exact match anchor had five times more traffic than pages without an exact match anchor. And you can see this and you can see this in the graphic here. It's like not having versus having. And so you should always have exact match anchor text uh, linked to your page. Again, you know, this is, this clarifies at least my stance that uh, you should have, a, a, you know, exact match anchor text, uh, depending on the anchor that you're, that you're trying to target. But it's also equally important to be mindful of the fact that if you go overboard, you will probably, you will probably see that as anchor text spam. And that's a real thing. And so you'd want to vary your internal anchor text just to make sure that, you know, Google does not see it as being spammy. But there's a certain extent to which you can go and Google will not see it as being spammy. And this is what we found here. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think and how this will help with your internal linking strategy. So I hope you guys found the video useful. I made a video on thematical link building, uh, which you should check out. It's very important. It's like it's part of the series that I'm doing here on linking. And so you should check that video out. Uh, the other video you should also check out is on, on the Google Core and the Google Spam updates, because if you haven't, if you're not entirely up to up to speed on that, you should be, because this may or, or may this is most probably going to affect your website at some point. Let's. Uh, so I hope you guys like the video, like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.